Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to O'Neill Cylinder Construction in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 of Realism Overhaul, where I continue to build a large space colony, really, not just a station that is 150 meters in radius and 1.2 kilometers in length, and I'm launching the second of many plates that people will actually live on in this place, and using the station carrier, which as with those boosters, a liftoff mass of 50,000 tons, which is huge. Uh, and of course, I know that O'Neill cylinders aren't meant to be constructed by launching the stuff off of Earth. They're meant to be constructed in space using space materials, but we can't do that very well in Kerbal Space Program. At, well, at least I don't know how to configure my parts to use the mods that would allow me to do that. Uh, there are mods that allow you to get materials from other worlds and then use those to construct things in space. That's a whole complicated thing and I'm making the parts in this case. So I decided to do it like this. So here we are with the station carrier and it's really long RCS burns that are necessary in order to rendezvous. That's actually the most time, time consuming part of this is all the RCS burns I have to do in order to make the rendezvous happen. We launched at the right time so I could get into the right inclination and also be relatively close to the station. We've had boil off problems and there was a little burst of the engines in order to cut out some of the residual speed there because the RCS would take too long. Uh, you can see this is the best we can do as far as slowing down with the RCS. Uh, it takes a few seconds just for 0.1 meter per second there. And because of that, I narrowly missed actually bumping into the thing, uh, the back plate there, so yeah, but I did miss it, I didn't actually collide with it this time, this time, and eventually I slowed down enough where I thought that it was okay to separate off the plate, the RCS is that sound, that sound is being used for the RCS right now, that was sort of an accident on my part, but I've decided to leave it because RCS sort of sounds like that anyway. So, here we go, moving the second plate into position, and in this light you can see how the plates are. They're all different. There are 18 different uh, images for these plates, and uh, they are in arrays of six. So, six will be a sequence together, and of course there are three sides that will be populated, and so that's how we get the 18. And the problem is, when I initially tried to dock it here, it didn't really want to dock, and it actually clipped into the station's arm there. You can see it's actually inside of it overlapping, as if the arm doesn't have a collider. It does have a collider, but it's acting like it doesn't have a collider. And then uh, when I tried to go away from it and come back, everything exploded. So. That's not good. You discovered the collider there, right? Um, so I had to start from a quick save that I did when this separated off from the station carrier. And this time it had the collider. Uh, so for some reason that I don't understand, when we first approach the O'Neill cylinder, it doesn't have that collider. Uh, so I have to remember to go away and come back before trying to dock, I think and then it'll work out. We'll see that with the third plate as well. I duplicate the issue, uh, but here we are actually docking the second plate. Hopefully I got it the right way around, otherwise the next ones in this array will not match up with it correctly. They won't look continuous with it. So we do want it to be the right way around, and there it goes deploying. Now I know that on the three non-populated sides, there's supposed to be fold-out mirrors that reflect the sunlight, and then of course on the inside of that there's supposed to be clear plates. All I've got is the clear plates. I don't have the fold-out thing uh, because I can't actually launch something that big, and there's no easy way to have it deploy. So I'm going to have to think about that. We're going to have the clear sections, that you have to have the clear sections because otherwise the cylinder won't be contained. It'll be vacuum inside, you know, it's supposed to be pressurized inside so that people can walk around in shirt sleeves and not spacesuits. So you have to have the clear portions to seal it. Uh, but then the big plates that are supposed to be mirrors, I'm not entirely sure I know how to do that just yet. So that I'll have to think about. 
for now we'll just have the clear portions and then the end there'll be an end facing the sun so anyway this is plate three right now again a populated plate in this case and we'll deal with the clear plates next time and again throttling down to make sure that the drag is limited and we're launching from Tampico uh, just to be clear this is my Tampico scenery that I made to serve as my launch location I think Tampico would make for a great space center and off go the boosters altogether the boosters have 64 RD 270 engines they're from the monument rocket the Hydrolox engines on the station carrier itself are sort of unspecified large Hydrolox engines. There would be 80 of them all together, and I think they generate 6,000 kilonewtons apiece, so somewhere around there. Sort of M1-ish, but not quite. Alright, here we are making orbit, this time with less margin. I don't know why, there must have been some bad move that I made. Also, I ended up going too high on the apoapsis, so I had to correct for that. But still, anyway, lots of RCS burns. One good thing about the RCS is it can use the residual fuel that the engine can't use, so I can take advantage of that. That's why, even though this is zero delta V, I still was able to make the rendezvous because it's just the RCS doing everything. Painful as that is because of the time it takes to do it. Anyway, here we are approaching the O'Neill cylinder and slowing down so that I can release the plate. The plate actually has 40 tons of hydrazine but that goes by real fast since it's a 1,700 ton plate. So off it goes. So the O'Neill cylinder is a mod that I'm making and testing here and trying to refine and one of the big innovations is that it is relatively lightweight. It's only 132 megabytes considering its huge size and all the images necessary to create the populated plates in particular. Uh, so there are, you know, a lot of textures, but I've managed to keep it relatively restrained. I want to add some more detail to it though, uh, especially in entryway, because right now the backplate doesn't have any way for any ships to like come in as some sort of airlock so I have to do that and of course I'm currently checking that everything fits together properly is one of the goals here in this series as once again the plate doesn't dock properly and it ends up clipping into the O'Neill cylinder arm instead of properly docking so that's another thing to watch out for. Uh, that's a thing that I'm also doing in this series is accumulating all these things that people have to watch out for and be careful of when using these parts so that people know ahead of time that these are potential problems. Uh, also there's a matter of lag. Right now we are nowhere near completing the whole thing and we're already in the yellow and starting to get hesitation from Kerbal Space Program as far as actually giving us frames when it comes to the station close to it so I have to worry about that making sure that that's going to be all right and part of it's going to be removing some of the extra RCS thrusters and solar panels I placed on the arms to dock them uh, but oh and right there I accidentally undocked the plate when I was trying to extend it so I had to contract it again and then try to dock that's one important thing, do not try to dock these extended. They, It does not like that. So <laughs> I found that out in a previous video. So anyway, extending it again since I redocked. You know, checking to make sure that the plates actually have enough fuel in them, right? Is the 40 tons enough to actually dock these things? Uh, that is another thing that I've been making sure of. So there's a lot that goes into this to make sure that it's actually usable. Not that I think anybody actually wants to do this. Um, it, is, it is a very tedious task. So I don't know if anybody else is up for making a O'Neill cylinder like this. But anyway, it's just one more thing that people could do. And I decided to make the mod that could do it. So anyway, that's the basic purpose of the series. And this is our progress so far. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.